Good evening. Good evening. Hi, 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 everyone. Okay. Great evening, everyone. Hi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is a special day. Today is International Women's Day, and it's special, well, special to me. It means something to me. It means a lot to me. And so um, I just want to wish every one of you, um, I know the day is, is this evening and we're coming on to the end, um, but I still hope and wish that you had a great day, remembering how special you are, remembering that you were fearfully and wonderfully made, and that there was a plan and a purpose for your life before you were even conceived. We learned that in the Bible. And we believe that's what God said, right? And that's what we believe. And that's what I believe about you too. So a happy International Women's Day. Um, this year, the theme is, um, is it kill the bias or stop the bias? I should look that up again. <laughs> but it's about the bias and bringing an end to the bias um, against women. Bias between, biases between men and women and how women are treated. And so I trust that if in any way there's any kind of bias or any kind of discrimination or differences around you wherever you are and this is against women and girls and girls as well young girls that you would have been conscious to it and aware of it and bring awareness to those around you too so that we can stop the cycle of bias and discrimination against women and so tonight again it's Tuesday Tuesday's thoughts and talk and with coach Wendy I am for you if you're looking for the first time you don't know me I am coach Wendy Hazel and I coach women who are women of faith, um, in particular women of faith who are in difficult relationships, narcissistic relationships, experiencing emotional abuse. And I coach them in how to find inner peace, even though you may still be in that situation and so that they can have a more satisfying life. And so that's what I do. And so tonight in Chooses Thoughts and Talk, I just we just talk about um, something that is just in my mind, in my spirit. The Lord might have brought it to me during the week. And just to talk and to hear your questions, I will try to answer the best I can. Um, to hear your questions and to um, hear your thoughts and your comments and your contributions to the topic. So tonight we're going to be talking about, I want us to talk about the two faces of silence. The two faces of silence. Silence has two faces. Silence can be powerful and beneficial in a good way. And silence can be painful. And so we're going to talk about those two and um, share if um, you've experienced any of them either for yourself or you've seen it happening to others. Um, and so we're going to talk on like how we handle that kind of thing, especially in difficult relationships, okay? So please feel free to share, invite others to jump on in tonight in this conversation. Okay, so let's talk about the power of silence, the power of silence. I'm gonna read two scriptures that helps us to um, get some a good side of, of silence and how silence can be helpful for us. And the first one is from Proverbs 29, 11, that says what? A fool lets fly all with all of his or her temper, but a wise person keeps it back. So the person who just flies off once the temper is flared and get angry and fly off with their mouth, the Bible considers them to be a fool, to be foolish, and they call him a fool. And But the one who holds back, it's considered wise. It's considered wise. The question is, which one is more comfortable for you? To fly off with the temper or to hold back when the temper is up? Okay. The other one I'm going to read and share is Proverbs 10, 19. That says, when there are many words, transgression and offense are unavoidable. But he who controls his lips... Oh, Sorry about that. He who controls his lips and keeps thoughtful silence is wise. 
one second. I should have just powered this totally off. There we go. Yes, sorry about that. Yeah, he who controls his lips and keeps thoughtful silence is wise. And so this one is like saying, when we talk a lot and when we can be quiet and we think we need to say and say and say and talk and talk and talk, especially if um, we just are the type of person we just need to be heard or want to be heard. What it's saying is that transgression, meaning, meaning um, offense and wrongdoing, as well as offense, offending others, you can't avoid that. It will happen when there are many, many words. The more we talk is the more likely we're going to cause offense and transgression. Um, but he who controls his lips and keeps thoughtful silence is wise. So this time it's saying the silence is not about just shutting you up and silencing your voice and not caring about what you have to say, but it's about thoughtful silence, where in that silence you are thinking things through. And so when I think of the power of silence and the good face of silence, in silence, I got a chance to really hear what you're saying. And in my silence, when I keep silent, I get to hear what you're saying, not just listen. And if you notice when you're not silent in that good way and you're just waiting to jump back and say what you got to say or both people talking at the same time, you don't really hear um, everything. You don't hear what you hear. So, but when you're silent and you're looking and observing body language and everything and person, the person's eyes and things like that, you hear a lot more. You hear a lot more, okay? So in silence, it gives me a chance to hear better and hear more of what this person is saying and what they're probably not saying. In silence, it gives me a time to do some introspection and check on me. Why is it that I feel the way I'm feeling? Why is it I am so angry? Why is it I am raging? And then it gives me that chance to also check and see, is this worth it do i want to pay this price to not to speak do i want to pay that price to speak sometimes it's yes sometimes it's no right but you're paying a price to speak you're paying a price to be heard by this particular individual if it's in a relationship we're talking about you're paying a price to be heard by them and then you want to know uh, is am i comfortable paying that price and that price is, could be exactly what goes on inside of me. The stress, the headache after, the migraine after, the, the, the chemicals, the adrenaline in my body. Am I comfortable paying that price just to be heard by this person? Um, and so silence helps me to do that. And then in that, silence also helps me to control my emotions. Control my emotions. Um, I have been someone who think a lot and I know, um, I remember as a child, I would have been in probably first form of, um, which is like grade seven or, um, so, and I loved the silence of studying when and then the whole house is sleeping. I had five siblings, my mom and my dad, when the whole house is sleeping, like one, two a.m. They had a radio station, I think it's Voice of America, it was called, if you're old enough to know about that. And that is the radio that played. And it, there was a sound of silence in that hour that I found beautiful. I loved it. If I'm reading and studying, just as I read it, I take it in. I don't have to go over it again. I just absorb stuff. You know, I just absorb stuff. And I love that silence. But in that silence too, I think a lot and lots of ideas come and as you know I'm sure like in that silence now as I'm older when I got to know the Lord I hear from God in that silence you know I hear from him and I hear things that he's saying and prompts and stuff instructions and things for me to do right so that is the power of silence okay power of silence I see um, someone said what I'm just gonna check their messages I fly off most of the time yeah. Hey, okay. Hi. I'm not seeing everybody. 
Oh, hi Sharon. Good evening. And Debbie. Awesome. Harriet. Yes. And um, who else? I think I saw Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks for being here. Okay. Hi. And Teresa. Hi. Okay. So let's see some of the um, comments here. Um, I fly off most of most times. Okay. Sometimes trying to go off just to be heard and make your point may prolong the argument and nothing is resolved. That is so true. That is so true. You get to the end and you get off a tangent, right? Um, and hi, Trevlon. Hi, Trevlon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's power in silence. Um, and so I'm going to ask, have you, um, how has it been for you? How, do you like silence? Do you like being silent? Um, or does it make you just feel as if you're being shut up? I, I know somebody who her anger and her rage came when she didn't get a chance to just say and have the last say. She just couldn't stand that. But um, how has it been for you in terms of dealing with um, silence? Okay. Thanks, Trevlon, for the blessings. Okay. So you can think about that. One more thing um, is that I found that the good thing about silence, it increases and improves our emotional awareness and our emotional intelligence which is understanding my, my emotions and understanding myself. Because you find like we can't change anybody. People will say what they want to say to us. They're going to do what they want to do, right? Uh, but we can't change that person as much as it's wrong. It's not right. We can't change that person, but we can change ourselves. And the best way of changing ourselves, or one of the ways to change ourselves is to... Um, be aware of my emotions, what's going on inside of me. I got to stop and check me and then, you know, um, realize I saw something the other day. Um, it was, the person was saying that sometimes as humans, we naturally will blame the other person for whatever happened. Something happened to us. We will blame the other person. It's either that other person's fault or it's our fault. And the person was saying, no, it's never a hundred percent. It's always shared. Some of it is their fault, some of it is our fault because there's some things we did or we didn't do, some things that person did or didn't do, and same thing with saying, you know. So um, sharing that, then I pause to check me and work on me. And silence will help you to make better decisions as to how then do I go forward? Will I continue in this? Will I continue to allow this to happen to me all the time? Will I decide no I, I will not um i deserve better okay so you want to um think about that then there is the pain of silence silence can be painful um it's painful when i just cannot be heard did i you just refuse total you're not being heard you're not being listened to you're being silenced and that hurts that hurts. If you're in a, a relationship or you interact with anybody who is, um, uh, okay, Sister Peggy said, hi, Sister Peggy. Thanks for being here. Appreciate all of you guys for being here. Okay. Silence for me has to be, okay. I missed that one. Somebody else said something. Oh, silence for me has to be beyond not saying anything, but having a calm spirit, emotionally neutral. Yes. Yes, I can do the silence, but I have to figure out how I can read these things more better. <laughs> I can do the silence, but I can't say, stay in the same place as the individual. You need to remove yourself from the environment. And that's good and that's healthy. That's Harriet saying that. Moving, removing yourself is easier to just um, regain your calm and your peace and process, process what happens. Um, Jennifer says we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Yes, Jennifer, but oh boy, some of us, whoo, it takes a little while to learn that and to pra put it into practice, right? It takes a little while for that, yes. But when we get it, when we work with it, when, and I tell you what, some of this, we can't do it on our own. We need the Holy Spirit. 
for those of us who know Christ and who are Christians, we know what that help, the help from the Holy Spirit really helps us to get through this. Um, without that help from God and praying and help, and it's difficult for some. Okay. True, I can only control me. Yeah, which gives us the option to listen more and talk less. Awesome, awesome. Um, in terms of the pain of silence, there are persons who will use silence to punish you. If you ever in a relationship with a narcissistic person, they that's one of the strategies um, they may use. That person may be one who talks a lot. When they are ready to talk, they will say what they have to say, and you just have to listen. Because sometimes it goes on for hours. Um, but then there are those who will use silence, um, especially if they know that you are a very interact interactive person. Talking things out means that something to you. Um, and if that person knows that they will use silence to punish you because they know you, it's hard for you not to be heard or you just want to share. This is not necessarily in an argument. Something you just want to talk things through, or sometimes you may think that there's something that is important for family, the relationship or whatever you want to talk. That person can use silence to punish you, and that is so painful. I know of people who um, have are experiencing that or have been in that, and that is so thing. So, what then do you do when you want to talk, you want to be heard, but silence is being used to punish you, and you're in pain? What then do you do? Okay, what then do you do? Um, I know one. Let me just see if I can get there. See any more comments? Um, okay, Sharon says, I'm learning and enjoying being silent in the midst of conflict because I get to see, understand, and know how to react to bring solutions and still be at peace. Awesome. That is so powerful. So powerful. Um, the, um, sometimes what persons have to do is, um, is get, you have to find somebody else to talk to, talk with. You have to find a trusted person. So you got to pray and ask God to raise up that person. You need a trusted person who will give you that space to be heard. And you just talk things through. So you just want to talk things through because that's how you were made up. Some people will just blank out and don't care. But you're made up of the way you want to talk. And because that's how you are. That's how God created you. And so... You may have to have a, a really good friend or you may have to have a therapist. Um, I know in Christian community, sometimes the therapist is seen as a negative thing. People may say, just pray, but I have to be honest. In these situations, when you're dealing with emotions and stuff and pain and things like that, praying alone doesn't help work. You pray, yes. But when you get up and with that pain, sometimes, yes, the pain may go. But for some people, they just need someone. They just need someone to interact with. And in those cases, I say you get a therapist or you get a good friend if that works for you or you get a coach. And as a coach, that's what I do. Hold that space and just to be heard and then help you to think through, especially if you so desperately want to work on yourself and just to have a more satisfying life for you. Right? And so we have a question. What do you think of instead of responding verbally? You text or write expressing how you felt. Okay. But if you're dealing with um if you're dealing with a narcissist and an abusive person, the texting and the writing may fuel more abuse because it gives them it gives them attention it also feeds and they're um seeing that they're hurting you and that it gives pleasure sometimes sadly that gives pleasure sometimes and so the the sometimes it comes across to as you're pushing more or you're insisting more and then you put yourself up, you set yourself up sometimes, especially I keep saying the things I talk about, it's not when you're dealing with the regular person. When you're dealing with a narcissistic person, 
that is just pleasure to bring you pain. That is pleasure to bring you pain. Right? And so I would say between prayer and finding a safe space with someone who holds that safe space for you to really discuss what is it bothering you or what is it you want to talk about may be safer and better for you in terms of your self-care and your mind, your mental state and everything is better to go that route than to insist on this person answering you or having a discussion with you. Um, because, um, that pressure can, can come across, can, 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 can put you in a, in a worse place, right? It can put you in a worse place. Um, on the, on the flip side, on the other side, um, if you decide in that narcissistic relationship, you decide to hold silence and it's not with an intent to punish the person, but just so to preserve yourself and um, to think and to hear clearly. What you may find happen is that that abusive narcissistic person is gonna start some argument, something negative, something, they'll do something to fuel and to push because they cannot stand the silence. Especially if you, you, you're you used to answering back and talking and trying, you're either answering back or you pleading or you apologizing or something you're saying, they're used to that, right? So the, the game there with them is that when they do things, they're looking for that. When you decide, no, no, I, I deserve to be peaceful. God promised me his peace. I deserve to have that peace and enjoy that peace. When you choose to do that, be prepared that that person is going to do very provocative things, annoying things, maybe even hurtful things, and say things just to get that because they cannot stand the silence. They cannot stand that silence because they don't know what's going on. They don't know what's going on in your mind and they can't understand that. So be prepared for that, but just be sure that your silence is never in a vindictive way or to get back at the person or, or to, you know, to cause them pain or make them suffer. Just make sure that that's not your intention. It's just about you, okay? All right, hi. Good night, Sister Rachel. Thanks for being here. Beautiful topic. The two go hand in hand. Um, Bianchini, um, the two, I'm not sure what, um, the two go hand in hand. I'm not sure what, if you can tell me a little bit more. Yes, so they can redirect or focus to them. It's all about them. Yeah. Yes, I think you you might be um Bianchini, if I get it right, you might be talking if you're dealing with that toxic narcissistic person, it has to be all about them and they'll do whatever to get it turned back to them. Yes. Um Harriet said writing wouldn't help. They will pick apart what you're trying to say and escalate. That is also something to know because that if you're dealing with these kinds of persons, they will turn and twist what you're saying into what they wanted to say. Um, this doesn't have to do with science, but this has come to um, my mind. And so I'm going to say it. One of the things that you find when you're dealing with a narcissistic person is that person tends to have these toxic, negative, wicked thoughts in themselves. And they think everybody else think that way. They think you think that way. You would be most likely because that tend to be the thing. You might be an empath, somebody who's very empathetic and just kind and, and loving and caring, right? And so you, those thoughts don't come to you, but then it will turn around. Some simple thing you will say, turn around and just turn it around into something that is um, not right. And that is very painful very painful to um to engage in okay now the other thing um i want to talk about with silence with pain when you're silent in that um not positive way one of the things as you go quiet and especially if you don't have anybody who you trust to tell things to you might be in a setting if it's a church or whatever you can't because the person might be a leader or an important person on the job you can't trust people to tell them things you can find yourself 
especially in relationship, losing yourself. Losing yourself in that you don't even know who you are anymore. The gifts you had that, that God gave to you, the talents, the abilities, the dreams you had, you know, you don't, you can't find them anymore. Where are they? They're lost and you lost yourself. Like you can't even make a decision on your own and you don't even know how I'm going to make it if I don't have this person who's, you know, hurting me and things like that. Um, or how am I going to get through this? And so by silencing and just shutting down and covering down whatever is you, over time you lose you, you disconnect from yourself just to survive day by day. And that's something we really want to um, pay attention to and work on because the gifts, the talents, the calling and everything, the purpose for your life, the, you know, why you were created, you're responsible and accountable, you and I, to God for that. And when we put relationship first, forget that, who God created, and put the relationship first, we end up making the relationship an idol because we put it before God. And so I, I, my prayer is that you will get an awareness of that and start to work towards turning that around, turning that back around. And worshiping God, let God take care of that relationship or that um, those situations. Okay. Uh, somebody said something here. I asked a question to help others because I had I don't that about twice, and you are explaining was the exact response. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I trust this is helping you guys. Um, Bianchini said prayer and counseling. Yes, but um, I don't want to say but. Prayer works, counseling works, but sometimes if that counselor does not understand narcissism and does not understand emotional abuse, almost everybody understands physical abuse, right? But emotional abuse, uh, uh, if that person doesn't understand it, the counseling can be not effective. I must say that. The counseling could be ineffective. If the person does not understand that, if it's a couple, um, and even persons in the in the relationship may want both people to go to um, counseling. When you're having abuse, emotional abuse, verbal and emotional abuse, that's not a marriage problem, right? It's not a marriage problem. And that, again, I, I always like, like to share is that you're looking at a pattern of doing this thing not sometimes um your partner you know your spouse says something that's hurtful and then it hurt you cry you talk about you say look i don't like that that thing hurt me the person would genuinely say sorry and they'll make an effort they may slip up again be reminded that you can see there's an effort to not do it anymore there's a sense of that pain when you're dealing with a narcissistic person they don't have empathy they don't they they don't feel the pain that you feel they're not capable of doing that and they don't ever say sorry because they never see that they have done anything wrong. They'll always find a reason why you are the one who made them do what they did. So the blame is always put on somebody else. The blame is on you, even if you had nothing to do with it. <laughs> um, I, I was reading something the other day and somebody said um, her son was playing. They were both there. I think maybe, maybe outside, whatever. The, ch the son fell. And even the husband is narcissistic, turned and said, look what you did. What are you going to do about it? Now, she had nothing to do. And if you, any of you um, experience that or live with that, you know what it is like when it's your fault. When, how is it that my fault caused you when you were down the road to run out of gas? Because some, some excuse, something that you had not, there's no way you can have, but the, fault, the blame is put back on you. So when you have things like that, counseling with the two people together, is ineffective it can even be worse for the person who is um, on the receiving end of the abuse okay so it's not a marriage problem it's an abuser problem without abuser needs counseling for how to deal with their emotions their actions and stuff and then the one who's being abused needs counseling for healing emotional healing emotional pain is two different things so that's not a marriage bringing the two people together it's not 
because what happens to if you're dealing with a narcissistic person they will speak more they will talk more they will over talk and overpower and shut the other person down you know um they also will find that they will be talking a lot to they don't keep silence they talk a lot to family members your family members your friends whoever they can get to tell them something negative about you even though these things are not true and they're not, never talking about themselves but they're doing that then the abused person end up being silenced because nobody's believing you right so prayer and counseling does work but the counseling must be with the understanding of how to take care when there's abuse involved and abuse is when there's a re a cycle the person repeats it and repeats it no apology they keep doing it um, even though they're told then it becomes abuse because it's over and over right so it's not for the person who makes a mistake and is repentant and sorry and apologize and try to change okay um, um, as Harriet says they can have you doubting your sanity yes yes that is so true okay all right so any other questions i really really appreciate you guys um being here my whole intent is to bring awareness to you about um silence um the power and the pain of silence and this is all part of emotional abuse um and overcoming that how you know working on overcoming that um and if you need help to work through some if you're experiencing emotional abuse and you need help to work through it you need a coach between a counselor and a coach a coach is someone who walks with you through the whatever journey it is until you achieve your goals and so you will know this is what i'm going through right now this is the pain i have now this is what's hurting me now and this is what i want to be what the person i want to be how i want to live the relationship i want to have a coach walks you through walks with you through that um, sharing different um, strategies and helping you to overcome and come out through that right so if there are no more questions anybody has any more questions I really really appreciate you guys for being here tonight I thank you I thank you for all the shares you guys did share stuff I love that just um, just share so that others can hear and that women can be set free it's not only women men some men are on the receiving end of abuse too some women are narcissistic and abusive but um this god has asked me to work with those women of faith um and so that's what i do but feel please feel free to share so that some if one woman one more woman's life can be set free from the pain um and the other thing i want to say i don't ever tell anybody to leave their marriage or stay okay that's god's decision well not god's decision god's guidance with your decision um because your everybody's situation is so unique right Everybody's situation is unique, and so nobody can tell you to stay or to leave, except if there's physical abuse, yes. Yes, right? There's no doubt about that, and it's physical. So thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. God bless you. And remember, again, you are fearfully, you're wonderfully made. You are special, one of a kind. There's no double. God didn't make a cookie cutter thing of you. There's a plan, and there's a purpose for your life that was set up before you were even conceived walk in that plan walk in that plan walk in that purpose discover the plan and walk in the purpose okay have a great night get help don't say silent awesome hi everton thank you for hopping in and great great counsel get help don't stay silent awesome thank you thank you thank you jennifer good night guys